Hey, all right. So this is my second cajon I've built. Uh, it's all built out of a piece of three quarter inch birch that I picked up at the home center. Uh, I think this piece costs like just a, maybe a little bit over 30 bucks. And you can get every piece except the front out of it. So all I'm doing here is cutting these things down to 11 by 18 hunks. I'm cutting them a little, a little proud. And then I'll just square everything up on the table saw and make sure it's all perfect. Just because my matter gauge broke and I can't run stock like that through the table saw without a miter gauge but I can run it that way so now I'm hacking up one of the extra pieces I have left over for the top and the bottom which is just an 11 inch square and I get to use my fancy half blind dovetail jig from Porter Cable now a sponsor I use this every now and then since this is going to be something that we're going to be sitting on I wanted the joints to be really really strong because the last thing you want is someone like banging away on a drum that you built and all of a sudden the thing falls apart on them so I decided to bring out the bring out the dovetail jig for this now it's important when you're using these to mark your pieces so that way like you know how everything goes together and you can look at it fast and figure out which piece goes in which you know goes together with what otherwise you end up cutting your like holes for the sound holes later on in the wrong spot and it gets all messy so mark your pieces this is just a dry fit here i just kind of loosely tapped it all together just so I can get the placing on this smaller, I'm going to call it a snare echo chamber at the top. Um, so I'm just doing that. Now I'm marking on the pieces where I need to go. Now this isn't the optimum way to do this. <laughs> As you can see, it's this isn't the best way to do this. But it works. I mean, I could have, if I... If I had my meter gauge on my table saw, I just would have set up my dado stack and done this. But I don't. I need to get it fixed. Or more importantly, I just have to fix it. So I had to do this funky clamping thing. It didn't... It was all right. I mean, it, it, it does what it needs to do. And it's going to be on the inside, and you're never going to see this. So it's a little it's a little janky up there in, in the one part. But it's okay. You know, it does what it needs to do. Now I'm just marking the center point on this board for the snare sound hole and bringing it over to the drill press and drilling it out. Now I'm only drilling halfway through with this one. Now flip it and drill the other way through. That way you don't get any uh, tear out on the back or the front. More importantly the front because we're drilling. We were going through that way. And then just rinse and repeat that same thing for the uh, the bass sound hole now I put my sound holes on the side because if you put them out the back then all your sound is going out the back and usually you're not people listening to you aren't behind you so on the sides it projects out the sides a little better I'm just putting a round over on these because this is usually how people carry these things you know you grab them by the sound hole and you don't want a big hard piece of you know, big hard edge there I screwed up a little bit here because I didn't think about this with the uh, with the dovetails how it would work because right now I'm cutting just like a little bit of a it's a it's a, it's a rabbit a rabbit with a an e an e and a t not an i t um, I'm cutting that for the back panel because I was originally going to paint this so I was just going to fill in the uh, the the uh, plywood sections and then paint it so but you'll see how that screws up here in a second it's not nothing huge it's just a little a little spot missing I'm just replace it so i'm just doing the glue up on this just putting glue inside the dovetails and just kind of smacking it together a little bit by hand just to hold it in place and then get the big guns out and 
get something to pound on and just slam them home. And it works out really well. Really good tight joints if you have your jig set up right, which is a pain in the butt to do. But once you get it done, it works great. So you can kind of see right there on the bottom right, bottom corner facing us, there's like a little cut out there. That's because of the thing. And then I also forgot that the, um, the, the partition there would leave a hole in the back too so it's not a huge deal because the it, it's covered up by the board and this board here in the back you always want to nail in nail in your backboard you glue and nail that one in the front one you always want to leave that one not glued or nailed back one go ahead nail it in now this is my partition section for my snare and i'm just cutting this to fit um, i'm going to leave it uh, just loose in there I'm not going to glue it or anything, so that way if you want, you can take the front cover off and pull that partition out, if that's more your style. Um, now I just, I got a piece of this uh, mahogany door skin from the home center, and I think a sheet of 4x8 of this is like $12. So for one of these, you're looking at about, it's right, I think it was, it was right around 50 bucks is what I spent on all the hardware and stuff to build one of these because it was 30 bucks for the three quarter inch birch ply and then I had the door skin and then I got a little bit of uh, like I got some feet for it and some some t bolt some t one of these things called t nuts and some machine screws to hold in the front which I'm drilling the holes for now and I just kind of eyeballing it and I know I don't need a lot at the top because I've got that partition space in there so that's going to hold things together and the base that gets a lot of hits so i want to make sure that's really um sturdy there so i put more more screws at the bottom than at the top now something i did later but is not shown in this video i will mention once i get there but right now what i'm doing is i got the the, the Thing taped down to the top so that way I can drill the holes into the through the piece through the top into the sides and I marked out all the sides so I knew where to drill and then I used my calipers to um, mark the center point so I knew exactly where the center was because it's important because I'm gonna put these T nuts in and I want them to be centered now what I didn't do here but I did do afterwards that I didn't get on video was I countersunk those in just a little bit I put a half inch um, spade bit on my drill and just burnt just give it a little just a little thwack just to get it down like a sixteenth of an inch just so that the um, the skin would sit flush with the um, edge so now I'm just going along doing a little test here see now things sound and I'm putting on just a round over around the edges of the skin because you don't want sharp edges because people are smacking it with their hands The, the the later part of this build really is a lot of taking the skin off, putting it back on, taking it off, putting it back on, taking it off, putting it back on. But it works out, and these T nuts make it really make it go really well. This is the a regular snare spring for a snare drum, and I cut this one long, and I ended up I didn't like because it, it was just making way too much noise in there. Like anytime you hit it, it was making too much noise. So I ended up cutting it just in half. You can buy one of those. I get one, I get one of them at the music store by my place. Um, I can get one of those for I think uh, under ten bucks, and you can make two. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. You can make two cones out of uh, one snare spring. So unless you're me and you cut it long, and now I can make one cone. So I'm just putting that in in the snare position. I thought about running it uh, vertically down the side rather than horizontal. Um, but I decided again, so I just like testing out things here. So we're trying it out. Now I'm just using my, uh, mark, my, whatever that thing's called. Slide rule gauge, marking gauge. Let's call it a marking gauge for now. I'm just using that, just set it to one inch and I did a one inch scribe. So all the feet would be in the same spot. Now I'm just kind of tapping it, seeing how it sounds. I am not a drummer. I cannot hold a beat to save my life. I can tap on things though, um, but I do I do give it to my buddy Frank, who is a drummer.
kicked out. But so there it is. There's there's the cajon. There's thing. Um, in hindsight, moratorium, if you will. I think I would only put one sound hole at the top for the uh, echo chamber for the snare part. And in the first cajon that Frank played there, I had rimmed the top half of it with a piece of maple to give it more thwack on the edges. So um, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. And if this video was good for you and you enjoyed it, please give it a like and a thumbs up. Or are those the same things? I don't know. Whatever. Thanks for watching. More cones later, probably. <laughs>